Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use a function inside of the epilogue job manager for creating test grids on the Galvo. Let's get into it. For the Fusion Galvo, it is a metal engraving laser. So what I did was I bought some sample cards. These are stainless steel 304, stainless steel to be specific. They are pretty thin. So if you use the wrong settings, it can start to warp. But I wanted to show you the process of how to use the test grid in case you didn't know that this existed. So make sure that you have some kind of metal material that you can use for the test grid and I will walk you through the process. So I'm gonna put this in the machine. It does have the paper or plastic peeled off of both sides. And then I will show you how to use the software. The first thing you need to do is open up the epilogue job manager. That's where this feature is going to be. I need to select the Fusion Galvo that I have linked and then go to the jobs tab up at the top. When you go into here, you'll see I have a bunch of test grids already made. Now, this video is to show you how to use the function, not necessarily what parameters you should use to get good results. This is just how to use the function. Truth be told, I'm still playing around with different settings and trying to figure out what I like and what looks good. Uh, so I'm going to use one of the test grids that I have come up with and just show you how that engraves. So if you're in here and you scroll all the way to the top, over on the right hand side, you'll see one that says generate. If you select that, it will pop up with a job generator. Now, because I'm using the Galvo laser, I don't want the process type to be engrave. I want it to be hatch because at least from what I've been told, hatch is one of the better results when it comes to the Galvo. And I'm not a Galvo expert. I will defer to some of them uh, because I'm still learning, but I'm just using this method. Now, I will name the job at the end because there's a way I'm trying to name them in order to keep track of what I did. But the element size, I'm going to use 0.15. So this is inches, so it's 0.15 inches by 0.15 inches. It will engrave a square much like what you see down here in the bottom left. Now, R stands for rows, C stands for columns. So if I change this to say eight by eight, it will change how many of those squares there's gonna be. And you can even do two by two if you wanted to, but I like to do 10 by 10. And this will, these are not colors that will actually engrave like this, it will not be the red and the yellow and the uh, green and the blue. These are the RGB color codes that it's going to use to generate the different settings. So I just wanna be clear though there that these are not going to be colors that will be produced by the laser in all cases. Um, it's going to just be for the software side. When it comes to autofocus, I don't use autofocus. I do it manually at the machine right now. And then the XY position, I'm just gonna use center and now what I want to do is set all of the speed, the power, frequency, stuff like that. So for speed, I'm going to keep this one constant. Again, I'm using one that I've used in the past. Uh, so I'm going to use 33% speed. For power, I'm going to have this change between the values of 15 and 50. Now it will increment itself. It does the calculation to figure out what those steps are across those 10 uh, columns in this case. So X is going to be across the columns and then Y is going to be down the rows. Frequency I'm going to do in the Y direction and I'm gonna do five to 30. Wave, I'm gonna stay constant. I'm gonna make that two in this case spacing i'm going to use 0 0.0001 so the spacing in this case is how close the hatch lines are going to be to each other so the higher the number the more spread out they are the smaller the number the closer they're going to be which will give you different results the 
angle I'm not going to change. And then for the passes, I'm just going to do one pass on this one. And you can play around with that and get different results. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use the one pass. Now, once I have this all done, then I name my job. The reason I do that is I kind of use a shorthand for what values I did. Because otherwise, I'm not going to be able to tell what kind of grid I used. So I use S for speed, and then I put 33 in parentheses to tell me that I used a constant of 33. Then I do power, and it'll be, if it's in the, if I'm changing it, I'll put the direction. So power changing in the X from 15 to 50, and then frequency in the Y from five to 30. Then I do wave two, spacing point zero 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 one angle zero passes one that's the way that i name it you do not have to do that but i like to do that because it tells me what i did if i were to go into it once i click save it will generate the grid and place it at the bottom of wherever i am so i'm going to double click it if you see here, it will pop up with the camera. I'm going to drag this over to the left. And then over on the right, you will see each individual square. So it, start, it starts at row one, column one. And then it will change to, actually this, I misspoke there. It goes column, comma, row. So the red is, column one, row one, then column two, row one, and then you start seeing the changes in gradients. So it's always, it's gonna go from left to right for row one, and then it will go down to row two, go left to right, down to row three, left to right, and that's how you can track where it is. So say that your favorite one is the second to last one. Chances are it'll be all the way at the bottom. And then it will be row or column nine, row 10. So it would be this second to last value. That's how you can trace where they belong. Once you have that set up, you can just go ahead and say quick print, which will send it over to the laser. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like as it's processing, just so you get an idea of how that works. Over here at the machine, it did send the job over as the top one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go ahead and click the play button at the bottom and let the job run. All right, now that it's finished, you can see it got hot here and it warped the bottom of the card. But let me show you the results in a little bit better light. All right, so here's the final test grid. You can see as the light reflects, you can see a little bit of pink, some blue, maybe some yellow, a lot of just what looks like grayish and browns. So it is nice that there is some color. I will say that color is hard to achieve for me, at least so far on stainless. I've heard titanium is really uh, the way to go if you want colors, but I am trying to figure out some colors on stainless. But that is what the test grid ends up looking like. I have one more thing to show you that I do, but before I do that, 
I wanna let you know about my laser community called Lasers Made Simple. If you go to lasersmadesimple.com slash community, it is a free community where you can talk with other laser users, get help with problems, and just get to know each other and share your projects. I also have a membership called lasersmadesimple.com slash membership that has courses in there that I am building up as well as doing group lives. Uh, so you, if you want more detailed information on how I design things from scratch, I'm going to be adding a couple of projects in there too. Uh, you can find all that at lasersmadesimple.com slash membership. One thing I wish the test grid had that it doesn't have currently is the labels. Now, it is kind of tricky because what settings would you engrave the labels at, at in order to get them to show up because the whole point is you're trying to test it. So what I do is I take a Sharpie and I label exactly what I did. So I have power, frequency, and then all the other settings on there as well so that I can at least narrow it down. Now this will match my naming on the software so that I can pinpoint exactly which grid I used uh, to do that. And if you want to use another name or add to the end of the name to make it more clear for yourself, you can definitely do that. But hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch it, and I'll see you in the next one.